This month, there has been a frenzy of interest in Nazi loot after the emergence of a map allegedly showing where stolen treasures had been hidden by the Germans during the Second World War. Whilst dozens of hunters descended on a village in the Netherlands to dig for the treasure, nothing has been found so far, and a diary allegedly showing where art and valuables had been hidden was last week said by experts to be a fake. That was after one group spent months digging up the grounds of a Polish palace looking for buried gold mentioned in the work. The real story of the treasures hidden, stolen and destroyed by the Nazis is as shocking as it is tragic. The most alluring of all tales of Nazi dudes are those that concern gold, which has been a word on Hunter's lips since before the war ended. The searches have been fueled by the knowledge that the Germans stole billions of pounds worth of it from governments, banks and Jewish Holocaust victims, and only some has been tracked down. American troops came up trumps in April 1945, just weeks before the end of the war, when they discovered gold worth billions in today's money hidden in Germany's Merkur's salt mine. Much of it had been stolen from the central banks of nations invaded by the Nazis, as well as from Jews. Overall, more than 8,000 gold bars were recovered. But beyond that discovery, other hunts for gold have resulted in disappointment. Lake Toplitz in Austria is one body of water where retreating Nazis are said to have hidden plunder. A search in 1959 didn't find any gold, but 700 million pounds worth of counterfeit notes that Hitler had planned to use to sabotage the British economy were discovered. Other forays in 1963 and the year 2000 also failed to find anything of note. In 2015, two men claimed to have found a train that was supposedly laden with gold by the Nazis and then hidden in a tunnel in southwest Poland, but after extensive digging failed to find anything, experts said that whilst the tunnel might exist, the train did not. There was a similar disappointing ending for hunters who searched a sunken German cargo ship off the coast of Iceland in 2017 in the belief it contained up to 100 million pounds in gold. In truth, most of the gold stolen by the Nazis was deposited in banks in countries including Liechtenstein and Switzerland. Directors of the Swiss National Bank turned a blind eye to the fact that they were getting gold taken from Jews who they knew were being murdered in their millions. And after the war, the banks, who also directly bought gold from the Nazis, were not forced to return the treasure to its rightful owners, whilst hundreds of accounts containing loot remained dormant. It was only in the late 1990s that the Swiss banks paid $1.2 billion in compensation to Jewish survivors after a successful lawsuit by the World Jewish Congress. 51 years after the war ended, they're afraid that official documents tracing Jewish assets are fast disappearing, as are the rightful inheritors. Swiss bankers have also been forced to concede, somewhat belatedly, that they have a moral as well as a commercial obligation to past clients. But lots of plundered gold is still in vaults in the country. It wasn't just gold the Nazis either stole or tried to hide. They also looted an estimated quarter of a million pieces of art. Thousands of works were found with the gold in the Merkur's mine, many of them stolen from occupied galleries and collectors. Among them was Edouard Manet's masterpiece in the conservatory. It was one of the rare pieces in the mine that had not been stolen, but had instead been on display in Berlin before the war. Another work in the mine, Pierre Bonnard's Still Life with Gold of Roses, was owned by philanthropist David David Veal, who had a staggering 2,000 pieces seized from him. 2014 film The Monuments Men tells the story of another epic discovery of mooted art inside a different salt mine in Austria. The works at Altausi, including Madonna by Michelangelo and paintings by Rubens, Rembrandt and Vermeer, were destined for destruction on the Nazis' orders as defeat looked certain in the war. Amazingly, the treasures were rescued in 1945 by the Allied team known as the Monuments Men, led on screen by Matt Damon and George Clooney. Nearly 8,000 paintings, drawings, watercolours and prints, along with 137 sculptures and 129 pieces of arms and armour, were recovered. Thousands of other works were taken by Hitler's henchmen, including ones by the likes of Paul Cézanne, Henry Matisse, Marc Chagall and Claude Monet. Others, tragically, were confiscated and destroyed because they did not conform to Hitler's definition of what Aryan art should be like. And in occupied Paris's Jeux de Palme gallery, 
the Nazis kept looted works in what was known as the Room of Martyrs, where officers could plunder paintings at their leisure. Most of the artworks stolen by the Nazis were recovered by the Monuments Men, but some, including paintings by the likes of Claude Monet and André Dura, could not be found. Raphael's portrait of a young man, looted from Poland in 1939, is perhaps the most famous example of a masterpiece that is still missing. But the story of the Amber Room is another tale that has beguiled treasure hunters since the war. Dating back to the early 18th century, the room, decorated with amber, precious stones and gold leaf, had been in the Catherine Palace south of St. Petersburg since 1755. But in 1941, during their invasion of the Soviet Union, the Nazis dismantled it and packed it off to Konigsberg in Germany. After bombing destroyed the city in 1944, the room disappeared and has not been seen since leading to dozens of attempts to find it. In 2021, divers cracked open crates on a sunken war-era ship off the coast of Poland in the belief that the Amber Room's contents were there. But sadly, all that was found was military equipment and possessions of people who died on the ship. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more.